Good evening and welcome to this very special concert. It feels almost strange to talk now without the cistern. I think this, it felt to me like, like an invocation actually, this first piece, and I cannot imagine a better way to celebrate the presence of Pauline as she plays with her friends for us and we listen to what she has to not tell us. So I'm sorry we are using now a few words. There will be just three sections of words and after the concert you are invited to join us outside with nine birthday cakes, one for each decade because a new decade starts for Pauline and this I think is a very good start for such a new decade. On your way out you will also receive a birthday gift for each one of you. You will receive a DVD with a recording of the concert which Pauline did with Cecil Taylor at the opening of MPAC. It just arrived this morning with Overnight Express ready for you. And you are also invited as you receive a birthday gift to return a birthday gift if you want to. Look for the two balloons with the 80 on it, birthday balloons in the lobby. There's a little silver box with a slit at the top where you can insert something. And should you not have the white paper with you to insert, there's a credit card station right next to it. <laughs> so you can give your birthday gift as Pauline wished for herself that her Deep Listening Institute would, would be supported. So we can contribute to that. And now please welcome our president, Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson. Good evening. We began the celebration for Pauline Oliveras with an immersive experience. And I want you to think for a moment about how different that is from our day-to-day -day experience with music. As background at a party or in a department store, if you want to call that music, as a means of blocking out the noise of a jet engine or as a distraction on a car trip. Professor Olivero's music invites us to be still, to find a connection, or to let a connection find us, to participate, and most of all, to listen with our whole beings. Her unconventional approach is to attend to the quality of the music, the quality of the sound. As a physicist, I appreciate the respect for resonance, for reverberation, and for echo. And I especially appreciate her use of natural space and spaces not built for music, like the cistern we have created here in our concert hall. Her music evokes the physical properties of the space and makes us experience the space and ourselves in that space in new ways. Now, at Rensselaer, we understand that the challenges one faces are what lead one to excellence. Talent and insight are tested by obstacles and arguments. The conventional always will push back hard. And it takes courage, confidence, and 
fundamentally grit to sustain the effort and achieve success. And Pauline has triumphed in an especially difficult arena at the intersection of music, technology, and culture. And in doing this, she has brought us something new, something to which we must respond. And of course, she has been recognized many times for her music. Among her key honors are the John Cage Award from the Foundation of Contemporary Arts in New York City this, in this past March, an honorary Doctor of Arts from the D. Montfort University in Leicester in the UK in 2010, and the William Schumann Award for Lifetime Achievement from Columbia University in 2009. Now, for all of her innovation and accomplishment in music, I also should mention her collaboration with Dr. Selma Bringsjord, who is professor and head of the Department of Cognitive Science, as well as with Assistant Professor of Architecture, Jonas Brosh. Pauline is working with them to produce a synthetic music conductor and improviser. And this will be one of our inaugural projects for our new Center for Cognition, Communication, and Culture, which we will launch later this year. As both an artist and a member of our faculty, Pauline challenges her colleagues and her students. Now listen to what you hear. Listen to this. Experience something new. Make it your own. Respond. Give back in a way that enlivens and humanizes others. Now, we strive to engender creativity, thoughtfulness, and leadership across the Rensselaer community. And so it is fitting that Pauline shares her art with us, providing both experiences that challenge and shape us, and an example by her own life of what we might be. Now, as many of you know, maybe not all of you, music is one of the great joys of my life it is because it touches the spirit in ways that cannot easily be described or defined. But it can only do that if we listen to it. And, and I listen to music alone many times because I want it to be immersive. Now listening, Pauline reminds us with her work, is actually not passive. It's not a passive activity because it does require attention in a world of distractions. It demands an opening up of our senses and our minds. We must give it time. We must let the music work within us. So deep listening goes beyond the concert hall. It is a process and an approach that allows work, experience, experimentation, and the insights of others transform us. And once we transform ourselves, we become capable of transforming others. So Pauline, let me simply say, first, happy birthday. And thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of the Rensselaer community. Thank you for being part of us. And we look forward to decades of deep listening because of you and with you. Composer, improviser, performer, performance artist, instrument builder, software designer, DIY hardware hacker, feminist icon, 
essayist, theorist, New York Times op-ed contributor, ace softball pitcher, <laughs> martial arts expert, music philosopher, champion of the disabilities movement, humanitarian, foundation director, revered teacher, deep listener. And last, but by no means least, a warm and generous colleague. I begin this testimonial to Pauline Oliveros with a simple list of attributes to indicate that she is not just a woman of parts, but a woman who brings together many parts in a particular way as a multiplicity, from the Latin multiplex, consisting of many elements in a complex relationship. I'll come back to this idea shortly. First, I will speak of Pauline as a colleague in the Department of the Arts here at Rensselaer. Her classes, research seminars, advising, participation in graduate critiques enrich the lives of all touched by them. She infuses the normal routines of academia with her own special values, empathy and rigor, wisdom and spontaneity generosity, and grace. Her transformative influence on countless students around the world is legendary. Recently, we have embarked on the challenging project of conceiving a new undergraduate major in music, premised on a 21st century musicianship, combining theory and practice, composition and improvisation, technology and new scientific knowledge of perception and cognition a vision of 21st century musicianship that you would look hard among current music conservatories and music departments to find even an inkling of. So as a colleague, there could be nothing more inspirational than to have the very embodiment of your vision sitting amongst you. Pauline makes it necessary for us to rise toward a high standard to be in a way better than ourselves. Now to go back some decades, 31 years to be precise, when I first met Pauline. It was at the Banff Center in Canada where we had the privilege of bringing Pauline for an experimental workshop on improvisational composition. It was my first glimpse of performance art. She collaborated with Linda Montano and the young artists in the program to create a feminist musical Cinderella. Also, this was my first look into group improvisation and sonic meditation. Word about her week-long residency got out, and people came from all over to share in the experience. So I was introduced to the astonishing power of her presence, the unique connections between spirituality and musicality, the power to bridge capacities and abilities through art. Here was something challenging and profound, and it marked me, even if I didn't really grasp the significance at the time. An open kind of musical process and form, elevating listening itself to participation. I spoke earlier of Pauline's attributes and roles as a multiplicity. In using that word, I'm thinking of the way philosophers have had two ways of talking about the relationship between many elements. There can be multiplicities that are discrete and those that are continuous. The discrete multiplicity divides things up into non-overlapping elements, each separated from the other, quantitative, spatial. In the continuous multiplicity, borders between elements are porous. They interpenetrate. They flow into one another. The continuous multiplicity is durational, occupying time, not space. I think of Pauline's many roles and achievements as the second kind of multiplicity, qualitative, continuous, durational, and this is also at the core of her deep listening philosophy and practice. In a provocative article about 10 years, 10 years ago on quantum improvisation, Pauline developed the idea that, quote, improvisation is creative problem solving and is a portal to quantum thinking, thinking in more than one state simultaneously." Unquote. Here we see the future in Pauline, the artist always eager to understand the leading edge of scientific knowledge, who is not only fearless in the way she appropriates new technologies into her artistic work, 
but in the way she envisages the capability of the human mind and body for evolutionary growth, for expansion. When I think of Pauline against the long arc of music and cultural history, I think of two strands. One is the lineage of the American musical Maverick, which is near and familiar and almost entirely male. The other, the female musical visionary, which is less familiar and perhaps more distant precisely because women composers and musicians so often were written out of history or their talent was not allowed to flourish. Speaking of the American Mavericks of the last century, Ives, Cowell, Varez, Parge, Nankaro, Cage. In the literature, there's a certain trope about them. Fearless, pioneering, ruggedly individualistic, iconoclastic. And then I stop to reconsider. Take the word iconoclast to shatter a holy image, an act of breaking asunder, what if we were to flip the terms to find something more appropriate, not the visual, but the sonic, sonus, not to break, but to reconcile or bring together, to make an accord, the root of which is to bring to the heart. Therefore, sonacordia, to bring sounds together in the heart, not iconoclasm, not a shattering, but a bringing together of sounds in the heart. So can it be any accident that such an artist, a son accordist, plays the accordion? About the other long strand, let's consider that distant mistress of music and the spirit, Hildegard von Bingen, composer, mystic, theologian, author, who flourished in the med medieval age, in the time of the classical liberal arts, when music was a fundamental aspect of learning at large alongside mathematics, astronomy, as well as philosophy. Much like, much like Pauline. Among her many accolades, I will single out, and two just mentioned actually, as particularly revealing. First, the William Schumann Prize, given two years ago by Columbia University, uptown, the first time to a woman. And second, the John Cage Prize this year, downtown, taken together a pairing of awards that reveals in a nutshell the breadth of Pauline's influence and impact. On the occasion of the Schumann Prize, I wrote, Dear Pauline, your accordion spoke to me this morning. The deep bass tones of the instrument you've been loaning me mellowed as I held a single low F indefinitely. As you had suggested, I was listening for the moment I no longer possessed any desire to hear the sound change. Clearing my mind and body of their instinctual reflex to make something interesting happen, I felt the world shift, just a millimeter of a lurch but enough to allow me to hear a universe of sound within just that one note, shimmering with an infinite welcoming tenderness. Thank you, Pauline.